today, I'm going to confess another weakness of mine, and that is tip recorders or boom boxes or ghetto blasters, whatever you're calling them, right? They're the same thing. And yes, I got another one because it reminds me of the actual one which I had um, after the first one which I was talking about in the other video, the family one. Uh, later on in my teens, I was searching for one that had an aux input. I desperately needed one to record Amiga music onto. And yes, I was crazy about that, believe it or not. I, I really wanted to record stuff. PCBWay to custom high quality PCB boards suitable for any of your personal electronics projects. Whether through haul, SMD, multi layered, flexible, or any other requirement you have. They also have a community of enthusiasts from around the world submitting their personal projects, and you can order PCBs related to anything from others in the community. They also have 3D printing and CNC services. I myself am working in a project for a future video and I'm planning to use their services since I'm impressed with the quality of their PCBs. I got one which was similar to this. Nowhere near as big. I cannot find the exact one. I don't even remember the brand of it. I think it was Ferguson or something like that, but I can't remember the brand of it. It was much smaller than this. This is the biggest one I've ever owned, right? But anyway, I got this thinking it was small. This is massive. This is even bigger than Senor Sanyo, the one which I, the Sanyo one, uh, which I worked on in the in the past in the video on. I'll link the series, but yeah, this is massive. And uh, I have to say, I really like it the way it is. It's probably amongst one of the best I've had, but it needs seeing do right? It's nothing wrong with it. It just needs like you know, crackly volumes and things like that. You know, things that are this age. I think this is from 1979-1980. Now this is a Panasonic one. I've never had a Panasonic boombox before, uh, other than later on when I got a C CD one, <laughs> you know, and twin cassette one, but it still didn't have aux in. <laughs> I didn't need that. <laughs> So basically I want to use this. I want to do a little restoration on this. I'm not going to do a full one right now in the sense that I'm not going to recap the entire thing, but I will do that in future. I'm going to give it a clean and I'm going to sort everything else other than recapping it out because I want to actually use it and I want to, you know, enjoy the experience. So let's get started. The first thing I'll say is that I don't like opening up and reassembling things. I find it a bit tedious, to be honest, and I tend to want to get into the restoration and repair straight away, especially when some things are complete riddles to get into. I have to say, though, that this Panasonic tape recorder is pretty easy to get into. One of the main things that I find tends to be a bit of a fault point is the record slider. You know that switch on the PCB, the long switch which the record button pushes to activate recording? This tape recorder was making loud shrill noises the first time I pressed play on it and uh, pulsating noises. Also, the other one has a fault, my other tape recorder. You can hear consist consistent crackling like someone's rustling newspaper while you're playing a tape on it. Again, the record slider switch needs some serious contact cleaning. Doing this alleviates a lot of issues as well as contact cleaning other switches and potentiometers. Put it this way, the VU meter didn't work at first. Spraying the VU meter switch fixed it completely. I think switch lubricating should be the first thing which should be done after dusting the machine off. The only problem with deoxid is that even the fader specific one is that the potentiometers are no longer smooth. They start feeling grippy after you've sprayed them which I really don't like. It removes some sort of lubricant and I'm not sure how to bring back that smoothness. And I don't know what other alternative there is to the deoxid fader spray. The next thing I do is adjust the azimuth on the tape head as it was really misaligned badly. I use pre-recorded tapes or a pre-recorded computer tape like the Commodore 64 tape for this as I don't have a special calibration tape. The last time I looked for one, they were really going for silly prices. The difference adjusting this was massive. It brought life back to the boombox. Yeah, 
As I said earlier, this uh, Panasonic tape recorder is very straightforward to get into. However, it's a little fiddly when taking the mechanism out to change the belts, but it's nowhere near, nowhere near as bad as the Sanyo tape recorder, which I restored a few years ago on my channel, Senor Sanyo. The Sanyo is so convoluted. It has an outer chassis as well as an inner one. And then you have to go through three or four layers just to access the front of it. The only thing that bugs me about this Panasonic one though is that there's no accessible speed controller. I've looked absolutely everywhere and in the service manual. Also, it only has one volume adjustment for one side, the right side only. That is annoying because the volume is sensitive. I'll talk about this a little more later on, but this tape recorder has a phono input instead of an aux or line in. I will build solutions for this in the next video. I just want to concentrate on the tape recorder itself in this video. In the end, I had to get the vacuum cleaner out and vacuum inside this thing as it was just caked in dust. And now it feels clean and it works just like new. I love it. Now the problem with this one, the annoying thing about this, which none of my other tip recorders have, right? Is that the aux in or the line in on this is not actually an aux in. It's a phono in which means it's for record players. So it's highly sensitive, you know, so you cannot connect your CD player or the Amiga or anything else to it. Yeah, because it, it just, it'll just distort like freak. Now, technically I could do something about that. I could go inside here and I can rewire, like I need to find the preamp, the preamp section of it and rewire it, like break the connections from the output and wire it to the input of it so it'll omit the preamp and that I can do however I don't want to mod this right so I'm gonna have to do something external and yes any solution to turn a phono in into a standard aux in is a bit dirty <laughs> because you have to take the sensitivity down you have to create a circuit which reduces the gain now I'm gonna do that right just to kind of demonstrate and just to see if it is usable. I mean, when I'm, you don't do this for quality. Yeah, you don't do it for quality at all. Uh, the reason why I would record with something like this is to have the characteristics, deliberate characteristics of recording with something like this. So, for example, one of my music tracks, which I create, I want to make part of it, part of the track sound like it's been recorded onto tape using one of these, you know, how we all used to do it. Most of us who could not afford like, you know, really expensive hi-fi systems from back then, uh, you know, we had all we had were these. They're, they're beautiful, I love them, but they don't record the best. Of course, it's not got, um, you know, they're not three head or anything like this. We appreciated what we had, put it this way. And not only that, there is a certain charm because of the nostalgia and those who recorded on one of these will understand. I'm going to make the recording on this even more dirtier by adding a, by creating a circuit and it's a simple circuit. It's not my own. I saw it 
Now, how I would have done it personally is like, again, the simple and dirty way is just to add resistors to the input, uh, the left and right channel and the ground. The circuit which I found, the person who did that added uh, capacitors in there because the equalization you have to adjust also so the capacitors can make sense. I'm actually more than anything curious. I'm gonna see how it sounds in the end, so yeah. Now, whether or not I'm successful in doing this, you know, if I manage to do it, cool. And if I don't, also cool. I have another idea which I wanna, I want another approach to doing it, unless again, without modifying. And that is here, a little project, which, uh, you know, I will show you after. One way or another, I'm going to find ways to record on this. Now then, let's, for a few beautiful moments, use this, uh, the actual input on this, for what it was intended for. Because as much as it is an annoyance to have this to be a phono input and not a line input, I still like the fact that you can, you know, I mean, this is from the late 70s, early 80s, this kind of era, right? So most of the things that you connect commonly to this would be, you know, turntable. So it makes sense, you know, to have this as that. The play thing, that's the part that doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> All the, even from the time period, right? Uh, the one back in the day that I had that looked similar to this, but smaller. In fact, it looks very much similar to this, but smaller. Um, and also the bush one upstairs, uh, the one with the view meters like that. But all those have a line in. They, they indicate connecting it to a radio, like just like the one we had back then, a shortwave radio here. And uh, this from the back actually has, if you look inside this little door here, can get the darn thing open from this angle <laughs> okay finally it's just a bit stiff that's all like connecting it directly from here to this din here personally i kind of like the idea of the din din cables i don't know it's just i'm growing to love them even more <laughs> even more than i did back then because uh, it just feels rather than the rca um plugs here and sockets they feel dins just feel more neater if you know what i mean just one cable for record play and that's it you're done even for midi yeah i still feel like midi din over usb din uh, usb din what the freak man over usb <laughs> midi i need some arabic mint tea i think <laughs> anyway um so this beautiful shortwave radio russian one what is it? So, what's the make on that? Kastra, la 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 I don't know what that says. If anybody knows this brand, could you please <laughs> write this in the comments? Because I don't know. These you can connect with the, all the other ones, but you cannot connect to this one because of that very reason. You know, for some, if some reason it's got a, it's the play out part alongside it, which confuses me, in other words. Anyway, so I'll look at this another day. So this, I'm figuring, the input is for this, the record part is for this, and the play part is for, to connect it to another amplifier's input. So it'll be part of a hi-fi system, I suppose. I mean, it is really powerful. It says 10 watts, right? But uh, the 10 watts, which uh, somebody commented about this, right? Because they got uh, annoyed with, and quite rightfully so, he got annoyed with how things are rated. Because I remember always in the Argos catalog when I was thinking, oh, 500 watts PMPO. And you look at the back of it and it's like three watts RMS. And I'm just like, it's really stupid. Just like I responded to that guy. It is just like saying, oh, this shopping cart I have, it can go like about 800 miles per hour, yeah? If you throw it off a cliff. But, you know, it usually just goes like three miles an hour, depending if you're in a rush. So yeah, let's connect this up to the record player and have a little bit of fun. Now there is something that is a little bit annoying about this setup. 
and I will tell you, you'll, you'll know when I'm doing it. One thing good about this is it, it actually takes chrome cassettes. No, not that one. As nice as it is. And I'll go for this one because I... Oh yeah, I was going to say, yeah, before I started talking about shopping trolleys. This is, despite it saying 10 watts, 10 watts is a lot, right? I cannot move these volume sliders above 0.1. It's too loud. It's just too loud. I, I'm, I'm scared of these volume controls. There is the adjustments inside, but only for right channel, no adjustments for left channel, which doesn't make any sense because I would have turned it down. You know, that's how loud this thing is. It's really bad because I don't want to blow the speakers or kind of damage it in any sort of way. So. Okay. The button configuration on this is weird. Just like all of the other ones I have, they're all different. I think the standardization of the, the buttons, I've got a feeling judging by, I think it, it started in the 80s. The 70s ones or the late 70s ones, early 80s ones, they just had weird ordered buttons. Like this one is, and I've talked about this in my um, videos in the past with regards to um, cassette recorders. So starting from your right, pause, record and play. Record is the orange one, the little orange square there. Pause, record, play, rewind, forward, stop, and eject is his own button. <laughs> uh, so normally I'm used to stop eject, so I'm constantly going like this on this one. Now this doesn't have a special selector for auxin or phono in. It's just, it turns on the moment you press record. If you've not got radio on, if it's on tape, then it'll do that. So all of the tape recorders that I have that have a line in are pretty much like that. So that's connected. And now you can hear a stupid hum. That's because we haven't connected the ground, or as my friend calls it, the pube. <laughs> but you know something? There's no ground terminal for this, right? So the best you can do is like touch it towards the aerial or the antenna here. Yeah, and that's really annoying. Why? Can you connect it on the... You can connect it to the shortwave antenna um, at the back and it'll shut it up. But it needs to be an actual uh, ground terminal on this thing. This one gives me a nighttime 80s sort of vibe. That's when I feel like listening to it at nighttime and it gives me like that sort of feeling. Whereas uh, this one is daytime 80s. I love the 80s in case you haven't noticed yet. Now this beautiful Technics SL3310 is a fully automatic um, turntable record player. So here you have the speeds here. You can adjust that uh, 50 hertz, 60 hertz, you know, each speed uh, dial. And here you select the size of the record you have, uh, seven inch, 10 inch, 12 inch, 12 inch we're going for. And this is how many times you want to repeat it. Yeah, the slider. And um, this one right at the back is like the R is it'll forever repeat the record. So it plays it again after it's finished. So that is the cueing. You lift the arm up like that. I'm figuring that this is got some really sophisticated mechanics inside it, which I know I highly respect. I'm not good with mechanics or anything like this mechanisms or anything more electronics. But anyway, I highly respect that. That's I find that amazing. Should we start it? Now this, it takes uh, normal uh, position tapes, ferrochrome, which gives me the clue of the, the era which it's from, late 70s, early 80s, and um, chrome. So we are, we've got a chrome tape here now, we take it here, and yeah, at first I was a bit skeptical, thinking these boomboxes, are they really chrome? 
or is it just kind of like there's someone's turned on the equalization <laughs> the treble a little bit do you know what i mean uh, but then when i went inside it i did see bios controls on the head so yeah you know i believe it now <laughs> that it is actually a chrome recorder so let's begin So let's have a little listen to the recording of this. And you know something? Honestly speaking, back then, I would have been really happy with this. I would have been really happy with the, the way it records. I don't, I didn't care about like the precise quality and the precise calibration measurement and you know everything being just right back then it was the experience of recording something on the cassette and being able to listen to it back and just enjoying it because it's good enough to do that you know it really is i mean as i went on yeah of course a bit more the recording with a three head calibrated deck I love it, yeah? I do that with the Iowa. I've got many cassettes which I've like precisely recorded the best I can with what I have. But, uh, and this is what I would have loved back then, but it was the most important thing. As long as it was loud, it was clear, it was like a good recording, like a decent recording. I'm happy with it. And uh, yeah, and there is a little charm. Not everything is like, it works linearly like that. Not everything is sort of, oh, the best is will give you the best experience. Not really, because there's, a, there's something about recordings like this. They give you that little charm that, that takes you back to your childhood and takes you back to your teen years. And, you know, when you used to record um, songs like this uh, and from the radio, from this, and the imperfection in that, that type of sound is strong enough to take you back, if you know what I mean. So, yeah, I'm happy with it. As I said, I'm determined to add that um, aux input. So, thanks so much for your likes, your shares, to leave your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to check out my other videos and do subscribe for more. Also, I do more than create videos. So for more content, don't forget to check out my website as it contains all what I do. at my blog fairly regularly by the way. I'm very happy with how I've designed my website and wish to thank Rich Garbutt for all the hard work and effort he's put into making it all work. Also a big thank you goes to my top chair patrons. Rich Garbutt, Axel Dominator, Electron Skip UK, Aaron Metcalf, Corey Ostman, Starglider77, Mark Bosek, Starlight Minako, Chris Sablinski and Veronica Explains. No matter what, the Patreons here each of you who choose to support me genuinely out of the goodness of your heart deserves appreciation. Hence, the least I can do to show my thanks is list your names in my video, regardless of tier. Thank you again to all of you who genuinely support me. I'm really touched by it. Have a lovely evening, everyone. Until next time, adios.